Hey, catfish people, what's up? This is Mike here today. I have brought you into my home. We are going to make an attempt at a catfishing cooking video. Uh, it's a little bit off the beaten, but I love to cook. So I love to cook. I love to fish. So why not love eating catfish? Um, this is no... Can't find this recipe nowhere. This is just things that I've came up with. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Took things that my granny taught me. But that too, her and my mother taught me how to cook. Uh, today, we will be southern fried catfish in a cast iron skillet. So, these are the ingredients. You have pepper, salt, Creole mix. My granny never used this. This wasn't around then. She made her own Creole mix. Creole mix, a little garlic, a little onion, and a little bit of chili powder for a little spice. Um, usually about a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of uh, the Creole mix, dash of garlic, dash of onion, very light on your chili powder. All right, that being said, let's move this out of the way here. Because I've already got the mixture together in a bag. Set the phone down here. Now, I take however much fish that I'm cooking determines on how much flour and uh, cornmeal that I use. Uh, All-purpose flour and cornmeal. I normally do about three to one ratio. So I normally go about every three scoops of all-purpose flour I will do one scoop of cornmeal and my little scoop here is as you can see kind of small don't really know the size I don't know three of those in one you just gotta fill it put all of that in the bag the Ziploc bag with my seasonings roll it up real good give it a good shake get some seasonings around in there real good all right now we got the pan over here heating up as I said, it's a skillet, cast iron skillet. I normally do this on a medium heat. Uh, if your stove just has numbers or if your stove has high, medium, low, anyway, medium heat would be around about seven on a number dial stove. Uh, now, I take my catfish and I usually, I clean it up. I put it in uh, salt water. I let it soak overnight in salt water. It helps take out a lot of gamey. Some people don't like the gaminess of fresh caught fish. It is different. Fresh caught catfish does taste different than farm raised catfish. Uh, I let it soak overnight in salt water. Then I rinse it off really well. Get all of that salt water and everything. Then I normally will let it soak in buttermilk for about four or five hours. As you can see here. Then I will take my catfish and pour in a spaghetti strainer to get the, uh, the, the buttermilk. Then give it a good toss. Let's turn the camera. Then give it a good toss. Like so. Now, we will come over here. We will get our flour. around here and try to prop it up so that you can see what's going on and hope it does not fall in this sink of water <laughs> all right now we're going to take the catfish get your plate you should take it and dangle it a little bit get most of the milk off of it drop it down in there roll it around some people drop them and shake them i find that if i roll it i can push it more gets a lot more of the flour up in the crevices of the, of the fish, bring it out, shake it, like so, lay it on my plate, go forth, keep on doing it, just roll it around in the bag real good, like I said, just push on it, shake it around in there, make sure you get plenty of this seasoning and cornmeal and flour mixture, your batter, your batter mixture, and that's about how you want it to look, I like a piece of chicken I guess you deep frying some chicken most people will egg wash their chicken you don't really want to egg wash the catfish because 
it, it ends up making more of a hush puppy surrounding around it when you use this cornmeal. I guess it would work if you just done flour. I don't know. Never, tr never really tried it that much to experiment. I have, I have did it. It was more like I was eating a hush puppy with catfish in the middle. Um, so if anybody has any tips on that, hey, send them. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Give me comments. Give me feedback. Tell me something I may be doing right or wrong. I guess there is no really right or wrong way, but you can tell me your way. Hey, I'll try it. We'll make a video on it. So, we're almost done here with this. One more piece. One more piece here. Get this all battered up real good. Let's set this to the side. Set this here. Get my hand washed off. Oh. While the pan here is heating up, so that we can uh, get this cooking. All right, uh, pan's heating up pretty good. Let's take the fish over here to the stove. Let's get the phone over here so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go out of view here for a minute. Uh, fork that's all I use now whole trick for frying foods take your batter that you're cooking with and uh, pinch it a little bit in your hand sprinkle it in your grease it'll start bubbling you know your grease is ready we will demonstrate here in just a second when we get this grease hot takes these cast iron skillets a minute to heat up. They are, you know, they're thick, but when they are good and they're seasoned, cast iron, anyone who cooks with one knows that. There's no better frying pan. There is no better frying pan. Anything, I fry everything in there, everything. So it works very well. And that was, that's a very good one. It was handed down. If you get a chance to go on a farmer's market, flea market, sales, you know, places like that. It's hard to find good old cast iron st uh, skillets now. If you see them, you might want to pick it up because they're not like the store-bought ones. Those are good. Most of these store-bought ones that you get now, they're just made other countries, just not the same. We're going to give this a test. Oh yeah, we good. So, what I mean by dropping the batter, we'll turn this phone around here so you can see. That lets me know that my grease is ready. So let's turn the phone now. That lets me know that my grease is ready. So, that being said, we will start dropping them in here. Um, typically don't want them, try not to let them touch if you can help it. I'll get, uh, I need a little room to cook. Let's get a paper towel here. When we bring them out, we're on seven, so we're good there. They're crisp up good. Um, now, let's around so you can see what's going on. And you can hear. See, it'll fry that side up right there now as I said these are some very thick catfish fillets most people will go three minutes most people will go three minutes one side three the other some like to go six to six I guess it depends on how you like your fish cooked I like my fish cooked all the way through I do not like biting in the fish and it still be wet in the middle that is not enjoyable to me some people eat it like that these fresh caught catfish takes longer to cook than store-bought fish. It just does. Fresh fish takes longer. I don't see many videos on fresh fish. They consider fresh fish as store-bought stuff. I'm talking about caught out of your local pond, reservoir, creek, river, whatever. 
that fish takes longer to cook I, for some reason it has more water in it um, I guess it's got to take longer to cook that water out so normally what I do with a fillet this size is about eight minutes on each side yeah that may seem long to some people but that is the number that I have found that I like that people that I cook it for like so instead of you sitting here through the next 16 minutes of just hearing me talking catfish frying we're going to pause this we'll bring it back when we flip it so you can see the sides we'll pause it again and then we'll bring it back at the end result till then we'll be back in a minute all right we're back <clears throat> just to give you a forgot a few things forgot to tell you the kind of grease that I use I use Crisco for pretty much everything we have flipped it after eight minutes and you can see there's the side that just cooked also Crisco a frying Crisco and to help speed up your cooking process you can cover your fish like so and it will make it will make like a little oven it will help cook it through a lot better and a little quicker when this is done we will come back all right we back uh got the fish done it's on the plate what it's been here so you can see what's going on all right here we go there's our fish and we will get us a fork another fork here and let's go ahead and cut one of these open okay see how flaky it's not wet it's not moist it's real flaky that's the way you want it to turn out I don't know how well you can see but anyway but turn this back around flaky best way to go it is delicious trust me wish you could taste it through the foam well we're gonna run this down to mama's mama loves her fish we'll surprise her this morning with this uh, give her a snack to eat on for lunch um just a how-to video, I guess. We're doing fishing videos and trap minnow setting videos. We'll do some cooking videos. Uh, we'll do some lures and showing how to make rigs. And we're going to show how to redo reels and grease and all of that. This is all stuff that my papa taught me. My daddy. They taught me all this. And the cooking came from my mama and my granny. So, uh... I hope you enjoyed this video hit the like button hit the subscribe button send me comments you know tips stuff you want me to try out whatever send it let me know don't know if you don't tell me because I will try it all I'll put a line in the water I'll try different cooking methods you tell me what you your recipe hey we'll make a video on it we'll put it out there for people to see best knowledge I'm telling you, it, it, the best knowledge is it, someone telling you, you know, hand me down tales. Till then, go fish, have fun, live life. God bless.